Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a pattern like this of fruit in Adobe Photoshop. Now the first thing we need is some fruit slices to work with. Now I've gone to unsplash.com rather than my kitchen but of course you could go to your kitchen and you could slice some fruit and take photos but unsplash.com is a really good site for finding images to use and I'm looking for fruit slices. I've typed fruit slices in here. This is the image that I'm using. It's from a Studio Bloom. Now I'm going to tell you why I'm using this image. There are a lot of fruit slices in here that I can use and they're all separated from each other. So they're going to be fairly easy to separate out into individual elements to use. So this is a really good image. Now if you wanted to piece it together from little bits and pieces, you could use something like this one. I would not use anything where I could not see a whole piece of fruit. So not that, but this would be a really good one to use. You could use this one as well. Let's have a look. Probably not this. I'm just a little bit concerned as it would be a little bit difficult perhaps to be able to select the pieces of fruit. So just be careful about what you choose to use. You need to be able to get whole slices. You might be able to get some out of here, but you're not going to get many. This You couldn't use this one. This one's a bit dark in the shadow. This one's cut off, so you probably get like about three or four slices out of this that, that would be all. So what you're going to do is go and pick your image on unsplash.com and then you can just click to download the photo. Now I'm going to switch across to Photoshop where I already have the photo downloaded and available inside Photoshop. Let's see the layers palette because we're going to be using that quite a bit. I'm going to unlock the background layer because we need to get the objects out of this. And so over here in the most recent versions of Photoshop we have something called the object selection tool and it is going to be set up like this. When I hover over a slice of fruit, I will be able to select that slice of fruit. But if I come over and select this one, then this one's going to be disabled, but this one's going to be enabled. So what I need to do is like add to my selection. So I've got one slice of fruit here. Let's go up here to this icon, which is add to selection. And that allows me to select multiple objects. So I'm going for the whole slices of fruit. I've done a little bit of work trying to put slices of fruit together to make a whole and it can be a little bit tricky. This is probably the only slice of fruit that it's worth doing it to because you're only missing an edge here. We've got plenty of limes, we don't really need that one, but this one might be valuable for just adding to the pattern, having a little bit more in terms of elements to use. So I've selected everything here that is in the image and is a whole slice. Now with them selected I can come up here and choose layer, new layer via cut. And the reason why I'm using layer via cut is that that puts them on a separate layer. It's just going to be easier to work with. Let's just double check that we haven't left anything behind. There's nothing here really of any value and so I could just go ahead and trash that. I don't need it any longer but it would be helpful to get these elements on their own separate layers. So let's just go and do that. So I'm going to select around each element in turn. I'm just using the lasso tool right now and choose layer, new, layer via cut. And I'm going to do that with all of them. So you need to come back and select your main layer after you do that each time. And I suggest you turn off the elements that you've already separated so it's not confusing. So. We're just going to go ahead and do this. It might help to learn the keystroke Shift Control J. This is going to be Shift Command J on the Mac. You can also use the circle selection tool, the lip selection tool here. That might be easier to use since these objects are basically circular. It's probably a good exercise for seeing how you draw a circle because some people start too far into the actual object. So you want to start as if this were drawing a square over this shape and then you'll draw a circle that actually encompasses it. Now I've got everything except this grapefruit which is on its own layer. So I'm going to select around it, go to the move tool and just make sure I'm on the right layer and move it into the document. Now I have auto select layer 
selected for the move tool. So I've clicked auto select and I have this set to layer. Just makes life a little bit easier when working with these shapes. Now I want a second copy of this because I want to be able to find some edge to use. So I'm going to make a duplicate. So you can see here that I've got two copies and I'm just going to rotate this one around until I get an edge in this place. So this was the place on the shape that I was missing the edge. So I'm just going to put this in here. And I'm going to move this one behind so we can see what we're looking at. Having done that, all I want is this edge piece here. So with this one selected and the eraser tool selected, I'm just going to erase the bits I don't want. Okay, so that was where the problem is. So I've got the bits around the edge cleaned up. And I think that's a pretty good fix. So I'm just going to right click this layer and choose Merge Down. So this is now one piece of fruit instead of two, although of course it was made up of two pieces of fruit. So let's turn everything back on. At this point I would save this document because this is the point where you've got isolated objects that you can actually do something with. Having saved my image, I'm going to start separating things. So I have the Move tool here and I have it set to Auto Select and Layer. That means I can just click on an element and move it. it just makes life so much easier. So I'm just going to move these around a little bit so I can see each element individually. And these two are causing me a little bit of concern because this one is so much darker than this one. So I have this one selected, so it's selected in the Layers palette here. I'm going to choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then use a Curves Adjustment just to lighten it a little bit. Now this is what your Curves Adjustment is going to look like. The first thing we need to do with the curves adjustment is make sure it doesn't affect anything except this particular layer. Now this particular layer for me is at the very bottom but that may not be the case for you. So what you need to do is to click this icon which indents it slightly. You can see this little bent arrow. That means it's only going to affect this piece of fruit and not everything because we don't want to brighten everything. We just want to solve the problem of these two pieces of fruit don't look very similar. So what I'm going to do is increase the lightness a little bit. So I'm going to drag up on this end of the curve. I don't want to do it too much, but I do want a little bit of lightening. So it doesn't really matter if they're not totally the same, but it will help if they look a little bit better. So once I've got that done, I can just right click this layer. Just make sure that you right click it over here and not here, because if you right click here, you don't get the options that we're looking at right click here and you can merge it down. So that's merged into that layer. So the colors are looking a little bit better. There is another way to do this which is really interesting. Let's go and select this piece and let's note that this one here is on layer 9 because that's going to be important. What we're going to do is choose Image, Adjustments and then Match Color. Now you can't do this with an adjustment layer. It only appears on the Image, Adjustments, Match Color layer. So I'm going to click on that. Let's bring the dialog back. This is a way of matching the color on this layer with the color on this layer. So the source, we have to select the image that we're working with. I saved mine. It's called Isolated Fruit PSD. And then we have to remember which layer it is that we want to target, and that's layer 9. So we're going to borrow the colors from this layer and use them to color this layer. Now you can see that we've gone a little bit too bright. So it's now put this one being the brightest. Well, we can just fade that a little bit. So this is the before and this is the after. Match color is a really good way of evening out some of these color differences or brightness differences in these shapes. Now we might want to look at this one down here. Here's this and let's go and try and match it with this. But let's work out what layer we're talking about. Well, layer 8. Let's select this one because we're going to borrow the colors from layer 8. Image, adjustments, match color. The source is going to be our fruit image and as we discovered earlier, the one we want to borrow the color from is layer 8. You can see that this one has brightened considerably. Let's turn it off and on again. Probably gone a little bit too far. Let's fade it a little bit 
and just click OK. So we've evened up the colour. We don't have to flatten anything because as I said, this has to be done through image adjustments. It's baked into this image. It's not a deletable or editable effect. It's just there. So handy little tool when you want to, for example, just even out two layers. The colour in two layers can be really helpful. Now to create our pattern, we're going to be warned that it's going to be easier to do if our objects are smart objects. So for each one of these, we're going to right click and choose convert to smart object. The new tool in Adobe Photoshop just works a little bit better with smart objects. So I suggest that before we go into the tool, we actually make these smart objects. Now, it's not actually changing the image per se, but it will just work a little bit better in the pattern making tool. Okay, so each one of these are smart objects. You can tell they're a smart object because they have this little box in the corner of their thumbnail. That's a smart object box, if you like. We don't need to move these around right now. Let's just go straight to the pattern tool. So we're going to view and then pattern preview. Now it says pattern preview, but it's actually really a pattern make tool because you use this to make your pattern. So let's click on it. It works best with smart objects. We already made these smart objects, so we can just ignore this warning because we're already there. Let's click OK. Now let's zoom out so we can see what we're looking at. This is our pattern. Right now, this is our pattern, but we don't have a background. So let's just exit out of pattern preview and let's go and add a background to our document. I'm going to target the bottommost layer in this document. I'm going to choose layer, new fill layer, solid color. Now there's a reason for using solid color because it just makes things so much easier when you're experimenting with color because you can drag over it to just choose whatever color you like. For now, I'm just going to use a sort of pinky color. I'm going to click OK. It appears that this is on top of my bottom most piece of fruit. So I'm just going to reverse the order. So now we've got a background which is going to make life a little bit easier. Let's go back into pattern preview. Again, we're going to zoom out because we want to get a good look at what our pattern is going to look like. So I'm going to the Move tool and now I'm going to start moving things around. And I want some elements to go over this border because that's going to make the pattern look less like a series of boxes of fruit, if you like groups of fruit, and more like an actual pattern. So moving around these shapes, we can start looking at what our pattern looks like. Now I'm a little bit worried that these two pieces of fruit are on the same level. So let me just swap it with a piece of orange. This is where this move tool set to auto select layer is really going to help you because you will be able to move things so much more easily. I also find sometimes that dragging the shape that is outside this sort of box here is a little bit easier. You don't seem to get caught up in what Photoshop wants to do is rotate shapes and do funny things with them. So you may find it's actually easier to do the moving using the shapes that are outside of that box rather than the ones that are inside the box. Again, if you see that two elements are probably a little bit too close to each other, you can just move something into a different place. I'm just looking for a balanced pattern. Now I'm pretty happy with my pattern right now. I think we're ready to go. Now once you're happy with your pattern, you're going to your patterns panel. You can get to that by choosing window and then patterns. And then down the very bottom of your patterns panel is a little plus sign. So just going to click on that and a little box will come up with pattern name on it. And I'm just going to call this fruit and click OK. Now at this point too, you might want to change your colors. So you'll double click on this fill layer. And again, this is why we use this fill layer because it just makes life so much easier when you want to sort of experiment with what color you want to use for your background because you can just drag over it to find a new background color. So you're just going to choose something that you like. When you're happy with that, again, go to your Patterns dialog. Mine's just closed down, so let's go to Window and then Patterns and then click the plus sign and you're just going to give it a name. 
If we're happy with what we have here, we can exit our pattern preview. And what we have here is our shape. So this is something that we could then save, although this is not a repeat pattern. Just have a look at this and we can identify that it's not a repeat pattern because this orange here is not repeated over here. So we can't save that as a repeat pattern, but we can go back into View Pattern Preview and then we get our pattern back. You can see that the edge of that slice of orange has reappeared. So provided we use smart objects for our shapes, this thing is editable. So we could come back in here and if say if we didn't like all these things, we could remove something just by hiding it for example, or we can move things around if we decide that we don't like the arrangement we have. It's very easy to recreate the pattern. So I think that that's an important thing to be aware of is using those smart objects because it just makes life so much easier. So let's see our pattern at work. For this, we're going to need a new file. So I'm going to create a very large file. This is 6,000 by 6,000 pixels, and I'm going to add my pattern. So let's go back to our patterns dialog. I'm just going to drag and drop it into my document. I'll double click on this to get access to, for example, the scale options. I'm going to drop it down to 50% scale. If I double click on the pattern thumbnail, then I can come in here and choose the other pattern that we made. Now before we finish up, there's another thing that we could do with this particular fruit pattern. Let's go back into Pattern Preview. What I'm going to do is select this piece of fruit here and I'm going to the FX icon and I'm going to add a stroke to it. So in the stroke dialog, I'm choosing my color as white and I'm just looking at the border. I think it's a little bit small. I'm going to increase it to probably something like about 20 pixel border here. It's on the outside of the shape. Its blend mode is normal. Its opacity is 100. Fill type is color. And I just clicked on the color here to choose the color that I wanted to use. So I just chose white up in the top corner. So now we've got a layer style on this layer. I can right click the layer and choose copy layer style. And then I can select every other one of these pieces of fruit right click and choose paste layer style and now all of them have this color border and that's another pattern that's another really attractive pattern very simply made by just adding a stroke border to these shapes and of course we can change the color of the background if we want to and again make another pattern out of this when we're done, we'll just exit out of this view with View Pattern Preview. These strokes are removable. All you need to do is to just click on the stroke eyeball and you can remove them. So they're also editable, obviously. Let's just put this pattern in this document and here is the green version. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.